whereas some people have like a, a privilege to aggress against other people and they'll use that privilege to provide the people they aggress against with protection and services. Well, let me stop you right there, uh, because as a, as a very feel, fearful person, uh, statist, I can already uh, envision some, uh, some catastrophes that, that might result uh, from opening that door. Uh, don't you think that that would just lead to incredible power disparity and, and predation and destruction and murder uh, if, if you went that way? And then maybe back to them, they would say, wow, well, wow, well, there's, there's ways, you see, that you can prevent that. That might happen sometimes. Um, but what you can do to prevent that would be like you keep the organization of people who can do this very, very, very small, okay, which is one side of the political spectrum. Or you make sure that it's always populated with, like, virtuous, honest, caring people who care so much about the well-being of others, which might be the other side of the aisle. Well, as the, the catastrophizer, I'd like to take the second part first. But what if the kind of power that this organization has would only attract um, people who are not virtuous? People who, who see, like you said, they have a privilege of aggression. And when you say privilege of aggression, I picture like uh, theft. And I picture threats to back up that theft so they can do whatever they want to do. And if necessary, I picture violence to back up the threats. And the idea that that kind of thing would stay very small to take the first part second, I don't see that happening. I, I see that, that coercive power only winding up in the hands of, of the most dangerous kinds of people. And then that just, you know, expanding outward forever. Well, okay, sure, that could happen, but uh, what we'd want to do at the beginning is have them write down some rules for themselves <laughs> on paper and keep it someplace safe. <laughs> I don't mean to be so fearful, and I, and I don't mean to be so negative, but uh, with all this power they have, and this privilege of aggression, what if they decide they don't want to follow those rules? And, and you know, maybe, maybe it's even not that simple, like, maybe, um, uh, like, fear is powerful. Right? Like maybe just because I'm so, maybe what you're saying, statist, is completely rational. It's just logically flawless. And because I'm just such a fearful person, I'm having trouble seeing the logic. Now think about how fear could be used. Like if there was a crisis, and a crisis came up, and people were very fearful, they, would, they might accept the, the people in that organization breaking those rules for protection or for additional services. And um, I don't see that going anywhere good either over time. Well, the people would have to be vigilant. They'd have to want to keep a watchful eye over these people. But um, it would be uh, very, very important uh, to make sure that people were well-educated so they could spot these things before they happen, you see. I don't know why I decided on this, like, 1930s gangster <laughs> accent. Uh, but at this point, I think I'm, I'm going to take it to the end, OK? <laughs> And if people are educated and informed, then those kind of things that you're so afraid of can't happen. Well, what if those very same people somehow were able to, like, take the idea of education, this lifelong pursuit of um, intrinsically motivated um, new knowledge integration, and they were able to turn it into like a public service that they control, then what? I was hoping they wouldn't come to this, but you just kept asking questions. And this, in my hand, is pretty much the end of every argument for statism, because it's the only thing that's powerful enough and intimidating enough to back, on, uh, back up something that is based on nothing 
rational. And uh, I know this is, this is kind of a messy idea right now because I thought of it like two days ago. But I hope that there's something in it that you can take, an idea that you can take and maybe incorporate it into the, some of the discussions that you have um, on the topics of politics or economics or education. And I think what's most important is that the catastrophes that um, Republicans and Democrats or status have to employ to counter our philosophy Needs to, they need to be retrieved from the deepest and darkest corners of the human imagination. The catastrophes that we have to employ to counter their ideology need to be, can be retrieved in history and reality everywhere. And that's it. So with whatever time we have left, um, questions, thoughts, uh, yes? Um, I have never listened to your show, so I don't know exactly, I mean, I'm a public school teacher and I see what's wrong with it, but I don't know if what I think is wrong is the same thing that you think is wrong. I support vouchers, I support the fact that uh, the money should follow the child. What exactly is your philosophy? Like, why do you see public school as such a horrible thing? I have a feeling it's this might be our only question, folks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like, I'm, I'm interested because I don't, I don't like the way it's going either. But uh, well, would you say I, I'm, I don't want to put words in your mouth? Would you think that maybe part of the problem is a lack of funding? No. Okay. All right. All right. Good. Uh, I don't. I don't think. I don't think vouchers is a. I don't think vouchers are a good idea. I see that as a Trojan horse to put more control, more government control in the hands of. Uh, of, uh, or more control of private school in the hands of the government. And I see that as uh, really a power play by the teachers union. I think that if, if the money that people pay in property tax was um, then like distributed out or given back to people to use for their education, the, the, the cry would be, well, that's public money, right? Because once the government takes the money, it's yeah. their money. So they would say, uh, well, uh, if public money is going to these private institutions, then there needs to be all this new oversight over those institutions if they're going to be receiving public money. And I think that the teachers unions would also jump into that and say, well, if these private school teachers are going to be receiving public money, they need to be held up to our rigorous standards. <laughs> so, but, but I think that that would, that would be uh, what would happen. Uh, my, my problem with education, which I didn't, I, you know, I hope uh, nobody minds, I didn't talk too much about it today, uh, more about what I see as uh, strategies for dealing with the impacts of government education, but uh, I think that uh, the, the government school system essentially now in America and as it has existed in other places uh, post-enlightenment is basically designed as a, a conduit that runs from the ideas and uh, beliefs of central planners and intellectuals right into the minds of impressionable children. And uh, I think if we use what happened in Prussia that became the Weimar, that became Nazi Germany, that's probably the, the, the best case study of where a government-run education system goes. I think it teaches, uh, like I said in the speech, obedience, apathy, and conformity because it's trying to produce a predictable populace Right? Now, now this, this, I understand that this sounds like a conspiracy theory, but if you think about how small a group of people is that are trying to manage an entire society, it would almost be insane for them not to do this. Right? Now, religion um, worked towards this end for, for a better part of a thousand years. Right? Because when people subscribed to a very strict dogma, they were very predictable. Like when something happened, it would be known how, how they would feel, how they would believe. And I think that, that education in the last 150 years has replaced religion as a tool for producing a predictable populace for the convenience of the government. It is a religion. <laughs> what? what is that? It is a religion. Yeah, they're trying to set up themselves as a religion. Uh, yes, yes, I, I agree. I agree. I agree. Um, so, uh, given kind of uh, theoretical thought, and I do like your theories, but from students themselves, 